Welcome everybody to Bot 10 Art. My name is Lazaro Gomez and you're tuned in to the Friday night live stream. What's up, Dan? <laughs> What's happening? Ah, man, so crazy. Woo! Friday night live stream. Finally, we're back again. <laughs> I hope everybody's doing great. You had a wonderful week and you're gearing up for the weekend. Hopefully the weather will be nice and everybody can just kind of chill have a good uh have a good weekend <laughs> i got a lot of stuff to do around the house i'm staying busy staying busy <laughs> staying busy so yeah um well uh let me be the first to say welcome to all the new subscribers to the channel uh it's pretty cool uh, i'm glad you guys are here i hope you stay for a very 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 long time and um you get to hang out with the art familia with the art family that we have here our little community of people who uh who are gracious and kind enough to spend one hour of their friday night with me here on my channel so um if you're new we do a lot of different projects usually it's about a project every week we do something different unless uh, we're working on something that takes a little bit longer so I I think uh, I think for this particular item that we'll be working on or this particular prop it'll take a couple of weeks but what I'll do is um, more than likely I will kind of work in between the week and kind of speed things up so it may be a two-part uh, two-part live stream i guess on this particular prop but we'll see we will see tonight we are working on bondo <laughs> oh let's see what's that uh ah sweet all is good <laughs> Ooh, nice sweet man well let me you gotta let me know how that movie is <laughs> i saw the trailer for it but i don't know I, like that's the one that has all the do the doppelgangers or like the it's the it's the one family and then they meet the other family and and like all kind of stuff happens <laughs> it was weird it kind of looked like a comedy more than a horror film but nevertheless um let me know how it turns out because i'm curious about that movie <laughs> but i hope you guys have a good time uh so yeah tonight working with what we're working or i should say what we're working with it's something that uh, Scully asked for, Scully Cash. Last week, I gave you guys the option of whether you wanted to see me uh, create D&D &D minis or you wanted me to work on the Junkrat Grenade, which is what I have here. I'm going to set this off to the side. This is the Junkrat Grenade. Uh, if You can see right there in that graphic that I have there if you're watching on YouTube. Um that they, these are the grenades that go on his chest so i sell these on ebay the whole set of eight of them uh just like this so this is a this is a good quality print uh basically it you know there's a there's a difference between this print and this print and as you can see i've already been experimenting a little bit <laughs> with this one here i bought some wood filler to um to kind of mess around with this sort of stuff because what I do is I use Bondo for prop making and stuff like that if I don't cast something uh, because there are some props that I create out of clay I make a mold out of them and then I pull a resin copy out of that mold so there's that but for stuff like this whether it's 3d printed or it's you know made out of other materials such as styrofoam and stuff like that i could use uh, a variety of things i could use fiberglass i could use bondo i could use you know different kinds of uh, materials to kind of coat the 3d print or the styrofoam you know because a lot of the times i'll use stuff like this this is a uh, insulation foam so you can carve stuff out of this and and kind of put a coating on top of it but uh I was experimenting with this so this is a lower quality 3d print uh, that I started putting wood filler on it and I wanted to see how it would sand and how it would do and it did okay it fared all right but the problem is that um, 
It takes a long time to cure. And yeah, it hardens in 15 minutes. So you could sand it right after that. But I just, I didn't like the way it turned out because if I wet this, it'll activate it again. And it's just weird. It's not, it, it works, but it's not really intended for that. Like wood filler is basically exactly what it is. It's to get two pieces of wood that have a gap and you kind of seal it with that. So, um, I don't know. I didn't like it, <laughs> but I mean, nevertheless, it's a good tool to have in the arsenal. Uh, and I'm sure I'll find the purpose for it, but for this particular thing, it did not work. So we're going to go ahead and use Bondo. And I thought it was a great idea, uh, just like Scully suggested, that we um, that we go ahead and, and make the junk rat grenade. And of course, the good quality 3 print, if you just wanted to buy the set and, you know, prime this and paint it, you're good to go because... It's a real good solid 3D print. Uh, this one took about six hours to print, and this one took about an hour and a half. <laughs> so right, you know, right away you can tell that the quality is different. So I do not sell this one. What I what I do is if I want if someone commissioned me to make these, then I would print out all eight of these like cheapy ones, and then I would apply the process that we're going to do tonight. And of course, that's going to make it real strong, real ready. Uh, you could you could sand it, prime it, paint it, and it's a good prop. And it's real light. And uh, and so we're going to do that today. Just like uh, just like Paul asked. <laughs> yeah, Chris wants to see that movie. So I'm curious to see it too. I just don't know. I'm kind of like torn between it. I don't know if it's a good horror movie or a good comedy horror movie. I'm not exactly sure. So but we'll see so this uh this right here started out as a model i created this using 3d uh, 3d builder and if you have windows 10 it comes native to windows 10 it's a 3d application you can make very rudimentary shapes you're not going to be modeling you know body armor or swords or anything organic you're definitely not going to be doing that uh, if you want something organic, of course, you could use ZBrush uh, or Mudbox or something like that. That's going to give you that organic uh, geometry that you're looking for. So 3D Builder is actually very rudimentary. You can do, you know, uh, spheres, circles, triangles, squares, rectangles, that sort of stuff. So I modeled this using a lot of different geometric shapes. And then once I was happy with the look, based on reference photos that I found online I basically merged it all together exported the uh, the file I believe it's a 3mf file or some some weird file like that <laughs> I don't remember off the top of my hand what it what it creates but uh, but anyways I went ahead and loaded that on Cura and I have Cura, I think 3.6 or something like that. I'll put I'll put all the the descript all the the links or all the software information on the description of this video. That way you, you guys know what I'm working with. So either way, I go ahead and load this model into Cura, which is the slicer software. And what that does is it basically analyzes the 3D object and then slices it down by you know each each layer or each level and creates what's called a G code and that G code is a language that my 3D printer Saturday understands and there you have it that's the basics of 3D printing <laughs> of course there's a lot more that goes along with it you could set the amount of layers uh, or the wall thickness that you want the piece to have this one has six layers of wall this one has about three or two i think so it's like real flimsy you could also set the amount of layers that you want on the top and bottom of the object this one has eight and eight on the top this one has two and two in the bottom so uh if i got this i could literally i can grab this and like you know squish it in my hand and like crush it and mess it all up <laughs> So, but there's a purpose for that. 
this saves me PLA and uh, this is a finished prop so it kind of all depends what direction you want to take so yeah and you know of course this one's lighter than this one and so on and so forth so yeah that's that's basically it there's no infill that's another thing uh, you could if I was to get this particular prop and break it in half or cut it in half or something like that you would see this I actually might have something digging through my crate <laughs> so underneath my desk I have uh, I basically have like a little bucket of rejects and I get all this uh, I get all this PLA and melt it down and repurpose it for other things so I keep it around here we go so uh, if you can see right there that grid that's the infill so I could tell I could tell the the software to say okay well I want a 10% I want a 50% or I want a hundred percent if it's hundred percent it's gonna be just completely solid uh, but yeah so the really good print has about uh, 15 to 20 percent infill so it's real strong and rigid uh, this one doesn't have any it's like hollow inside so if I was to cut this one in half uh, it would look empty so I actually do have a reject So this is this is a reject print and as you can see it's like real flimsy so it's not it's not as bad as this because this is obviously a reject print it's not it's not that way see I can squeeze it and it's not doing that <laughs> but uh, but it is hollow inside just like this and for this particular one it was a reject because the um, the temperature wasn't set right on my printer and it, the PLA was like close to the end of the roll and it was kind of like hokey so I abandoned this one and then reprinted this that just came out so anyways that's a uh, a quick lecture in 3d printing <laughs> and if you if you make props if you make props and, and you're interested in cosplay and all that good stuff um, it's a good tool to have I have videos on my channel of how I built mine uh, I got my 3d printer in a website called gear best I want to say it was about 160 bucks 160 170 bucks uh, it came from Canada came from Canada blame Canada <laughs> um, they they do come from China but they get to the US in in a lot of different ways so if you order yours in GearBest uh, it's gonna come through Canada go through customs and all that good stuff it comes in a box and it's all in pieces and uh, it takes you about eh, six to eight hours it took me eight hours because I was actually filming the whole process but uh, but the printer takes about four to six hours to build but um, like I said if you're into you know cosplay and you're into making props and all kinds of stuff then definitely the 3d printer is a tool you want to have because you know you can you could uh, model quick little objects and and attach it to different parts of you know whatever it is you're creating so a lot of people like um, like Bill Duran of Punish Props he'll print something out and attach it to whatever he's working on and then make a mold of that and, and so on and so forth so it just saves you time and for me uh, this particular prop it's junk uh, junk rats grenade and it's meant to emulate a pipe bomb of you know of sorts or if you will but this is you know it's supposed to be all metal uh, you have the the metal the metal pipe I guess here and then these two crazy looking caps and there's supposed to be some kind of fuse system or something that goes from here to this side piece here so you know it, it's like could I go to the hardware store get a pipe get two pipe you know caps and paint it and do all of this crazy stuff yeah I could but if you're wearing eight of these things they're gonna weigh a ton <laughs> they're gonna weigh a lot uh, you're gonna be freaking out people 
like especially security at a convention they may not want you to be walking around with pipe bombs you know just because it fits the character uh so this is a pretty cool way to to have a very light very comfortable prop on you uh and not get in, you know obviously not get in trouble because we don't want that right we don't we don't want you to get in trouble at conventions but that's where you know you start thinking about how you're going to create this prop and what are you going to do with the prop and you know the materials you're going to use i could have created the whole thing using foam uh i could have used a combination of foam and mdf uh, i could have made the whole thing out of mdf i could have you know used a, a a wide selection of materials but being that i have a 3d printer i'm able to model model what i want uh it saves me time <laughs> it saves me time so there you go and of course like i mentioned before i sell these on ebay so if someone's looking to cosplay as junk rat it'll save you time because you would receive this right here and then you would prime it and paint it and you know do whatever you want and you could also go through the whole process of putting bondo and sanding and painting and all that so it's totally up to you but for tonight uh we're just gonna go ahead and work with the little cheapy one <laughs> the little tiny cheapy one now if you're not familiar with bondo bondo is an all-purpose putty as it says on the can <laughs> that was a no-brainer right it's easy <laughs> but uh basically bundo is uh is made it says right here is made for interior and exterior home use but it's also a body filler so it could be used in metal it could be used on drywall concrete wood masonry uh it could be used on cars it could be used in homes and it has a wide uh range of what you can do with bondo so a lot of uh a lot of prop makers uh use bondo for different kinds of things like there was uh there was one person that was working on a master chief helmet and they built the whole thing out of uh out of foam like foam pieces and stuff like that and then used bondo on top of it which was a little weird but it did work uh it did work and they were doing it piece by piece little by little which is what we're going to be doing tonight because this sort of stuff it has it has a, a work time that you have to adhere to and uh and you have to you have to know how to use bondo so first things first of course safety <laughs> safety when it comes to bondo if you're not familiar oh yeah that's right that's right it's used in boats too as uh as dan indicated it is used on boats but uh if you're not familiar with bondo i've said it in other videos you know you work with bondo the minute you open it or you know because it has this particular odor and if you're walking around somewhere you could definitely definitely say oh someone's using bondo someone's using bondo because it does they have a it has a particular odor that's unique to bondo but of course you know safety's first i am using it in in the home lab <laughs> but uh i do have some fans here on the side i hope they're not interfering with the sound but i do have uh, a fan going i have an extractor over here that's pulling all the fumes that way but you definitely want to use this in a in a well ventilated area I tend to work with Bondo outside. So I set up a makeshift little lab out there and I work with this stuff outdoors. It is uh it is flammable. <laughs> so you might want to consider that. You don't want this to get near a, an open flame or anything like that because it will catch on fire. And if you haven't seen Bondo burning, trust me, you don't. <laughs> Yeah, you like the smell of bundle. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. I mean, I do too, but of course it is bad for you. Uh, I use a respirator. I use all kinds of stuff when I'm working with this outside. Uh, for tonight's for tonight's demo, I'm only using a small amount. As you can see right there, that is all I'm going to use. 
because I don't want the entire house to smell like Bando and I don't want to die here doing this demo for you. <laughs> I kind of value my life, you know what I mean? Uh, but you'll get the idea and you'll see how we work with it. But yeah, it definitely has a unique smell. So you don't want to put this near an open flame. It is flammable. If you have Bondo and it sits around for a little while, you're going to have to open it up and kind of stir it with, you know, a, a stick or some kind of uh, stirring device because it will separate. You'll have like a layer of liquid on the top and then you'll have the bonding material in the bottom. So you want to go ahead and uh, stir that up until it's nice and gray like the one I just showed you right here. And you're good to go. So this, uh, this is the material, this is Bondo, and it's not reacting, it's not uh, getting hard or anything like that because I have not added the hardener. So this is a two-part deal. And I'll tell you this, <laughs> the first time I used Bondo, I used way too much of this and it got hard like real fast. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I can see the jokes coming now. <laughs> uh, it's a family show, guys. It's a family show. But I thought of all the jokes, too. <laughs> so anyways, uh, the more you add of this, the faster it's going to react with the Bondo. And you're not going to have a very um, long working time. So I tend to put very little of this in the mixture when I'm doing uh, when I'm doing props and stuff like that it'll take a little bit longer to dry but it's well worth it because it gives me a little bit extra time to work on it so that of course has a uh, formula that you could follow in the back of the package but I kind of eyeball it you know I, I eyeball it and I see I see what works for me so uh, I have my gloves on because I don't want to be touching this stuff and messing around with it. And you definitely have to read the uh, the warning label that's on the can. It says it can cause eye irritation and it may cause allergic skin reaction. So I have my gloves on to protect myself against that. And I will be using my safety goggles. <laughs> so. I am kind of safe tonight. <laughs> I am kind of safe. Of course, I would have some kind of respirator or something like that to stop me from breathing this sort of stuff. But for the demo, um, we're not going to be spending a lot of time with that. So before we get into it, we're going to go ahead and uh, play a little something that I like to call strange but true. This is the part of the live stream where I just randomly give you a strange fact or something that I think is kind of unique that I think about. So uh, I have a strange fact ready just for you. And for this week, it is this. The reason the taste of artificial banana flavoring and artificial banana flavored products don't taste like bananas is because it's based on a type of banana that was wiped out by a plague in 1950. So there you have it <laughs> for all you banana flavored lovers out there. I personally don't like banana flavor too much. I like to eat bananas, but uh, not, you know, not artificial candy and stuff like that. So there you have it. That's your strange but true fact for the week. <laughs> all right. So to apply this onto the model i made this makeshift little uh squeegee it's basically you know a piece of cardboard that i cut and i put some masking tape on top of that and hopefully uh, it'll be durable enough to spread it across here and i'm not going to be using a lot of material because what i'm what i'm doing is and perhaps if I move a little bit closer, you can kind of see, hopefully it, it'll it focus. You can see that, uh, that the piece has a bunch, of, a bunch of ridges. Let's see if we can get a good, there we go. It's kind of going in and out. <laughs> it's going in and out a little bit, but you can see it has all those ridges. And what those ridges are, 
are the layers of the 3D printer. So what we're doing is we're putting a light layer of Bondo across here so that when we sand it, it's going to be nice and smooth and the ridges are gone. So this is a technique that a lot of prop makers use and it's real easy and uh, and it you know it makes the prop look really awesome once it's done. So that's what we're going to do. That is what we're doing. <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, I don't need you to be making comments like that. <laughs> My beautiful queen said that's what she said. <laughs> All right, so this is the uh cream hardener. <laughs> That's the that's the bad part about going live <laughs> or doing videos that are live. This is the cream hardener. You can get this. Uh, it's obviously a Bondo product, but you can get this in Walmart. You can get Bondo at Walmart too, but you can also get it at any hardware store. It cost, this this is going to cost you about two dollars. You could also uh, buy the kit that comes with the activator or or cream hardener and the Bondo together. So. Um, I kind of ran out, <laughs> so I had to buy, I had to buy a new one. <laughs> and what I like to do is I like to kind of make sure this gets all mixed around pretty good because once it sits in the rack, it could separate. So what I like to do is I don't like to apply it onto the bundle right away. So uh, I get this little pile right here and kind of separate it right like that. So then this stays over here in case I want to make a second batch. So this is what I'm going to activate here. And with a high level of concentration, <laughs> that'll work right there. That's literally all you need because this thing is going to react fast. So uh, the formula is gray, but as you mix, Bondo is going to turn pink. And depending on the amount of activator you have, uh, the faster it's going to go. So sometimes it's just something that you have to kind of get used to. And, and you add, the more you work with Bondo, then you kind of figure out you figure out the timing of this thing. So there we go. Leave that right there. And you can see that it's now a, a different color. It's now pink. And this is what we're going to be adding. So I'm good with that right there. I'm going to grab a little tiny bit. Just like that. Just a little tiny bit. And apply it onto the model. So I will say this, if you go light with Bondo, that's okay, because the more material you add, the more sanding time you add. So you don't want to like go crazy with this stuff and add it everywhere because you're going to be sanding a lot more later on. So I just kind of take my time, uh, apply a little bit just like this and just keep working, just keep working the material. Now, if you miss a spot, you could always go back and fill it later on. Because, like I said, the you know if you if you did this process and let it dry, because it becomes sandable in about fifteen minutes. So I would venture to guess that whatever we do today will definitely get to sand on tonight's live stream. So I tend to go light. I wipe off the excess because I want it to only be on one side of this cardboard and we keep going. Sometimes you get a little extra on the back side. So there you have it. And again, if you have raised areas, cause you're going to have that, uh, there's a little, there's a little life hack that you can do because once this starts drying, then, uh, then you could, kind of knock some of the high pieces off because that's the thing too as it as it cures you're gonna know that see this is already drying so I gotta work a little bit faster 
Uh, but as it as it's drying, yep, that's it. So that one has a lot of activator in it. But as this, as you work with this sort of stuff, you'll you'll notice that the high points are really sharp, and uh, and you you don't want that. All right, so this is pretty much already done, and that's literally how fast the reaction is when it comes to Bondo. But I'm okay with that, and since I have my gloves on, I can kind of manipulate it just like this, and that's gonna help me. Um, that's gonna help me later on with the sanding process because. You don't want to you don't want to put a lot on the prop and then sit here for hours and hours and hours sanding a piece that you could have just like easily um, done away with like this so the screwdriver is definitely a good thing to have as you can you know start taking some of this material off because that that part right there does have a little lip and again as it's drying you could use that as a gauge to see but as it's drying you could you know you have a you have a surface that you're not going to spend a lot of time sanding so we'll let that sit it's almost it's almost there <laughs> And I will say this, you have to also be careful uh, with the reaction because Bondo does heat up. <laughs> and when it heats up, it is no bueno. <laughs> so all of this access, I just get rid of. And I'll be ready... I'll be ready to, to uh, make another batch or mix up another batch of this stuff. So I get rid of this excess. And I like using the cardboard because now that now that this is on it, of course, the Bondo is going to stick to it. But you could always just go ahead and use the other side. So if I was using this side to work on the model, I could just turn it around and keep using it. So it works best on flat uh, flat surfaces rather than cylindrical ones but for this particular piece uh, you could you could pretty much follow that follow that curvature so for the smaller pieces here you would obviously use a smaller section you would use less bondo and get those filled I wouldn't recommend covering the entire thing with bondo this is going to be one of those like uh <laughs> green. <laughs> I knew it. I knew all this was going to happen. <laughs> uh but I do recommend I recommend taking the approach of rinse and repeat, right? So if you if you're working if you're working on this particular piece, you either start you know, pick pick a side that you want to start on, whether it be the top or you want to do the bottom or you want to do the side or this you know just this ring piece or this ring piece don't try to put bondo here and bondo here bondo here and keep going like that because it's not it's not beneficial this is definitely one of those things that you want to rinse and repeat so you want to apply the bondo you want to sand it once it you know once it's nice and smooth you apply bondo you sand it apply bondo sand it and uh, what some people do when it comes to working with Bondo is that you're always going to have a high spot and a low spot. It just it work it works that way. You're always you're always gonna gonna have that. You're not gonna apply Bondo, you know, perfectly smooth. I'm sure there are some uh, some people out there who are experts at it and have been doing like body work forever. Uh, Perhaps they can get it or get it really close. But if you are brand new to using Bondo or you're a brand new prop maker, uh, you kind of want to take your time. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Cool. I'm glad. 
Will you be working with uh, Bondo? If you are, then definitely you know tag me so I can see it. But uh, so yeah, so this is this is pretty much dry. I mean, it's a little bit tacky, but we could try sanding it. And like I mentioned before, this is definitely one of those things that is rinse and repeat because you don't want you don't want the project to get away from you. And I tend to work that way no matter what. If I have a humongous project or a very small project, I always tackle it the same way. So I go from step A, B, C, D, and further down the road. Because projects like this tend to run away on you. So if you were if you were trying to bondo everything, you're gonna run into problems. You know, oh is this part drying? Is this part wet? Oh I stuck my thumb in it, blah blah blah. So you know, you can focus on a particular area and just focus on that. And when it comes to the sanding, you can zen out, play some music in the background, and sand this nice and smooth. And uh, there are some prop makers that they will apply Bondo to something. They'll sand it nice and smooth. They'll spray paint it with a primer. They'll use a, a spray primer and use overhead lighting or or set up a rig very very similar to how uh, surfboards are made there'll be lights on the left and the right and you could kind of see uh, the, the way the shadows fall on the object what's high and what's low so just looking at this I can tell you that it's low right there and it's high and then low again and high and you know that sort of stuff so the way I have my lighting it lets me see that real easy so I don't really necessarily have to prime this piece because I, I can get away with that. But if you're working with, you know, a, a different kind of object or you want to make sure that you're getting that coverage and that coverage is perfect. Like if I was to make a mold of this and I wanted to get rid of the ridges, I would definitely apply the Bondo. I would sand it, prime it. And then you know wet sand again and prime again so it's nice and smooth and when I make a mold out of it uh, the piece that I pull out of it will be perfect so that's usually that's usually the way it goes when you know when you're making props so this is uh, I would say this is tacky enough now I'm looking for my sandpaper I think I set it off to the side I'll be right back to grab some sandpaper and we're gonna go ahead and sand this so that you can see that process. So I'll be right, right back. I promise, right back. All right, here we go. So uh, this is just typical sandpaper. There's a Harbor Freight that's real close to my house. So I like to frequent it for this sort of stuff. Uh, because you shouldn't have to pay a lot for sandpaper <laughs> and for me yeah I don't you know I don't go out of my way to spend like nine ten dollars on sandpaper because you just go through so much of it so I go to Harbor Freight and they have a package there that has a variant or it's a variant pack so you'll have a thousand five hundred two fifty all in one pack so it's it's really really cool so this particular sandpaper right here is a very rough sandpaper and this one I believe is 200 let me double check that oh no sorry this is a 60 I have a 60 and it goes all the way up to a thousand so this is a thousand it feels almost like shark skin and this is what I would be using to do all my wet sanding so this is dry and this is wet so for this particular piece we're trying to get rid of those ridges so I don't want to add any more ridges uh, with this coarse sandpaper so we're doing something in between and uh, this is just like a, a more fine uh, sandpaper and that's literally it you just go to town start sanding this thing and the cool thing that the cool thing about sandpaper is you'll you'll see right away where you need to sand because it's you know you're gonna start seeing lighter spots and wherever the lighter spots spots are uh, 
that's where this part of the surface is not matching that. So you would just keep sanding until it's all white or all light I should say like the material is going to be lighter and as you can see right there uh, it's a lot lighter than the other stuff so that's what you're going for that's what you want and for me like I said it's you know I'm getting rid of the ridges so I'm not I'm not too concerned about you know how super perfect it's gonna be because if I have to apply a second coat of Bondo on top of this, I will. And, you know, just to get that, that smooth, uh, that smooth surface or tech, or I don't want to say texture, but to make sure the surface is real, real smooth. And that's what, that's what you're going for. So you would basically just keep sanding until all of those, you know, until you have achieved that, until all the surfaces are nice and even. And this is, you know, this is basically the way you would work on a prop. And if you notice, I am, I'm sanding only in one direction. I didn't go this way because that's the way, that's the way the layers are, right? The 3D printer is printing this way all the way up. So I'm not doing that. I am sanding opposite to that. So the lines are like this and I'm standing, I'm standing this way because that's what I want. I want the object to be smooth. So there I could see that we are, you know, we're getting some uniformity and that's what we want. And once you know once they they match because this is light that's dark that's light dark light dark once it all matches that's when that surface is smooth and if it takes a couple of passes then it takes a couple of passes but it's going to turn out a lot better and the bondo is like real hard material so it's going to make the prop last a lot longer. Oh, sorry, I, I keep neglecting the chat. <laughs> ah, I see. Cool. Well, if you give it a try, um, it's, it's definitely something really neat to work with because it's that, it's what, it's that kind of material that when you're working with it is not forgiving. <laughs> Like once you have Bondo on it, you're going to have to sand it off if you want it off. Uh, but it is, it is a, a very cool material to work with in the sense that you could do a lot with it. And that's what I love about working with Bondo. So this is what I was, uh, this is what I was referring to working with Bondo and the more you know the more that you add the more sanding you're going to be doing so you you definitely want to want to do it right so you don't so you're not spending a long time sanding your prop and if you have a lot of high spots and stuff like that then you're going to have to use a real coarse or, or rough sandpaper to just knock it all down so you're going to be spending a lot of time just sanding when if you, you know, if you apply it as smooth as you can, you're going to be spending a lot less time sanding. Hello, hello. What's up, art kids? Ah, well, I mean, it's good. It's good for me, too. <laughs> Okay, so you could always mark the Bondo surface with a pencil and use that to show... Yep, that's right. That is correct. Like, a lot of the times you'll see... You'll see people marking on certain spots that need to be sanded and stuff like that. So, yeah. Good tip, Dan. That is true. We miss you, too. Welcome back. 
I was looking on Instagram. I saw the, the new artwork you guys are doing. It's pretty awesome, man. I'm so proud of you guys. I am very proud of you. Yep. Uh, very, very similar to using epoxy. Um, there's epoxy, there's epoxy sculpt and different materials like that that are very, very similar. And tell you honestly, the wood filler it wouldn't be any different than using Bondo. It's just this has a better um, long lasting quality. I think the the wood uh, the wood filler will probably be a lot more forgiving because uh, as you apply it, you can wet it and then you can kind of, you know, shape it and do all of these kinds of things. But I noticed that when I was working with the three with the uh, 3D print, it wasn't it wasn't covering those valleys. It wasn't covering those, you know, those gaps. So Bondo definitely will. Because I, I kind of feel like if you water down the wood filler then it's just going to follow that geometry it's not going to it's not going to fill the holes the way you want it and i could you know right now i'm running my nail across the surface and i don't feel any ridges uh not like here and you can kind of tell the difference so that's across the ridges and that's over the bundle there you go ASMR <laughs> is that what it, yeah that's what it's called <laughs> so again you know I can keep going I could refine it even more if you're extremely extremely delicate handed you could use a Dremel which will make Andrew happy <laughs> uh, and kind of get this smoothed right away so that's that's pretty much it uh, that's pretty much it as far as like working with Bondo Ah, you've used epoxy. Ooh, <laughs> epoxy is a pain in the butt. <laughs> it can be, and and again, it's like every material has its own way of working with it, like its own rules, its own laws, right? And bondo has its own laws, epoxy has its own, and it's like, yeah, it could be a mess. <laughs> Trust me, I've been there. I've like that's that's what I love. So, all right. So that's that's one of the things I love about Adam Savage, right? Uh, I don't know if you guys follow Tested or not, but I do. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Adam Savage, all the way back to the MythBuster days. <laughs> but even before that, I knew that uh, he worked on Star Wars, and that's kind of where I started following him. But what I love about it is that even him. All right. Even he makes mistakes. So, and we're talking about professional, right? Pro maker, pro like DIY guy, and and he makes mistakes too. He's working. He's currently working on this NASA uh, spacesuit because he loves like spacesuits and stuff like that. And he's working on a helmet, and the visor for the helmet was created by Bill Duran, and he messed up the visor is a bunch of times and then of course Adam putting it all together and there's like this metal piece that goes around it yeah one day builds does it <laughs> he always he always says the same thing one day builds are never done in one day and he just wrote a book called every tool is a hammer so I like I love it but um, but watching him mess up and you know all of this crazy stuff i love it and it's a true inspiration to me because sometimes you know i put added pressure to myself i'm like oh crap you know don't mess this up or i'm holding like something that i glued together and i let it go and it you know it falls apart <laughs> it falls apart um but you know what i love about that is that he he tends to come from the philosophy that if you don't make mistakes, then you're not going to learn. And it's so true. And working with Bondo, working with Epoxy, like you guys are mentioning in the chat, it's exactly that. It's like if you mess up, that's how you learn. Like the first time I was, you know, uh, as, as a kid, 
you know, putting model kits together because I used to build model uh, airplanes and stuff like that. And, you know, holding this piece to that piece with the glue and just very carefully holding it, holding it, holding it. And next thing you know, I'm like, oh, OK, <laughs> uh, I'm stuck to my airplane. <laughs> and so, of course, you learn how to use crazy glue or CA glue. And you go to take it, ow, ow, you know, oh, you got to run it under the hot water and you kind of free yourself or you rescue yourself from that mistake. And then you learn uh, to, you know, keep a nice safe distance from the two pieces that you're gluing. And yeah, that's the way it works. You know, if you make a, like I remember making a prop, I remember making a prop out of styrofoam. And I had, you know, I took an, a, a long time shaping this thing and it was beautiful and sanded down just nice. And I'm like, all right, cool, right? Cool. This is ready for paint. I grab a can of spray paint and I start spraying and I'm watching this thing like melt right in front of my eyes. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe this. I failed to read labels. I failed, you know, I failed to understand the materials I'm working with this beautifully shaped thing starts melting because I'm trying to prime this thing with spray paint so of course uh, the alcohol in in the spray paint or whatever starts dissolving the insulation so then I'm like well hell this is stupid like we got to go back to the drawing board I created another one this time I covered the surface with acrylic paint and uh, acrylic paint mixed with Mod Podge and that created a surface that I can now spray paint and it did not dissolve my product, right? Failure is always an option. That's correct. That's what he says. Yeah, Adam says that failure is always an option. Uh, <laughs> and again, like I said, he's he's a true inspiration to me. He's one of my heroes. And um, and so anyways, that's how you learn that, you know, right now you guys are watching me uh, do this. And I have the experience already and I know how to work with this sort of stuff. And, you know, it's kind of unfair if you were to, to just crack open Bondo and start doing stuff. And it's going to, it's going to, you know, turn out crazy because the first things that I created turned out crazy, right? The first things that I tried or attempted to create were horrible, right? I just, it's like, nope, this is garbage. And I would throw it away and start all over. But uh, through the years of making stuff and, and building things, um, you definitely, definitely learn how to create things. You learn your materials. You learn that everything has a certain little law, right? Everything has a way of working. <laughs> no mistakes. Yeah, just happy accidents. <laughs> you got it. That's right. Uh, and another, I'll tell you what, another another beautiful saying he has or Adam has uh, is hide the crimes to me the first time I heard him say it it was like oh my god he gets it he gets it because you know you're you're working with something and you're like you know what if I just cover that up right there that'll hide the crime like look how beautiful that looks see that <laughs> And so in prop making or costume making or just, you know, manufacturing something or creating something, you're going to run into those things. You're going to start thinking about that and you're going to, yeah, you're going to hide the crimes. You're going to, you know, maybe I could just zip this together or maybe I can glue this together or do, you know, something like that. And um, another person I follow is Evil Ted. And Evil Ted is, uh, you know, he came from the film industry as well, but he works with EVA foam. And, you know, he'll, he'll tell you what's important when you're putting two pieces of EVA foam together is the top part, right? The surface. So if you had these, if you had these two pieces or uh, I'm trying to get in the camera, if you have these two pieces that you want to join together, then the surface has to be smooth. It doesn't really matter so much. You know, you don't have to be so precise on the back end, just as long as the outside is perfect. So he is hiding his crimes, right? And so with this, it's the same thing. It's like, if I can't get this sanded just right, I'll add a little bit more Bondo. I'll sand that until it's nice and smooth. 
I'll paint it and keep going. So, uh, so yeah, epoxy, Bondo, uh, Mod Podge, whatever it is you're using, definitely keep track of those laws. So, uh, so yeah, there you have it. That's the uh, that's the quick demo. We're kind of running out of out of time, and I want to play trivia. So, um, off camera, I will continue working with this, and then hopefully next week we will be at a point where we can paint this and you can see a complete finished button art prop the way I would make it if I was commissioned to do so and I wanted to show you guys that because it's it's literally that it's just like trial and error <laughs> so this is a new prop that I introduced to my uh, to my eBay website and like I said I'm selling the kits so I'm really excited to see how people use it or how they paint it or if they go through this whole process or not uh, there will be an instructable for this so I have to take photos I have to write up everything and and all that good stuff but the instructable will be available real real soon so I'll continue working on that but for now it is time for a little bit of brain tickle it's time for trivia so this is something new that we added to the live stream along with strange but true it's really 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 simple I will give you one trivia question all you have to do is leave the answer in the form of a comment on this video not in the chat and the points will tally we have multiple winners uh, at, at the moment let's see where are we at all right, cool. So right now, Leela is the leader. She has six points. Dan has one point. Scully has one. And I don't know if he's watching or not, but we keep tallying up the points. And whoever has the most points by the end of... Uh, well, I was going to do the end of the year, but I am taking a break in the summertime. So there'll be two prizes. There'll be one, uh, one in the summertime and then one around Christmas time. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to send you a box of goodies. It may have artwork, it may have props in it, it may have materials for you to try. I don't exactly know what I'm going to be sending, but I promise you it will be great. And this is how you win. So last week's trivia question, you were correct. That's why you have six points, Leela. It is Neverland. <laughs> it is Neverland. So just to recap, last week's question was uh, where would one arrive? at the second star to the right and straight on to morning it is neverland so that was last week's question and today this is let's see i'm trying to pick a really really good one <laughs> all right here we go so here's your trivia question for the night we're doing we're going a little bit harder on this one uh, but if you know the answer make sure to leave the comment on this video the island of Borneo is politically divided among which three countries? That is your brain tickle question for the week. I will read it one more time. If you know the answer, leave it in the form of a comment once we finish the live stream. All right, once we finish the live stream. The island of Borneo is politically divided among three countries. Or, sorry, among which three countries so there you go that's your question and uh, I'll give you the answer next week good luck to you guys and uh, you guys got to try to beat Leela I mean she's got a huge head start on you so uh, you got to knock her down <laughs> or encourage her maybe I mean I don't know you guys can work collectively or however you want to do it <laughs> that's totally cool with me uh, so there you have it let me turn this off we're no longer playing trivia. <laughs> so if you like this, uh, if you like this particular live stream and you want to see more, of course, give it a like, share it with everybody and all that good stuff, because whatever you guys do help me. Uh, please, guys, help me welcome new subscribers to the channel. It's totally crazy, uh, but I do thank you. I hope you stick around for a long, long time and join our art family. I'm going to continue working with this. And if, you, uh, if you're a regular around here, then you know where I'm going for dinner. The beautiful family is waiting for me, and that's where we're going to go. <laughs> I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend, uh, an even better week, 
And we're going to go ahead and continue working on this next week. And, oh, also, before I go, uh, let me know what you guys think about this. I just got these. If you don't know what these are, let me know. And, uh, and I'll probably do a video about those right there. But they're really handy. I'm really happy they just came in. Uh, and, you know, maybe that'll be another live stream. So until next time, thank you very, very much. I love you, Art Family. Thank you for everything you do for me. Thanks for hanging out. Um, and I don't know. <laughs> There's nothing else to say. <laughs> but if you do, uh, if you are working on projects and stuff like that and you need my help, uh, feel free to drop me a line or, you know, send me a message. I'm pretty much everywhere in every social media <laughs> website that's out there. And I'll help you out the best that I can. All right. So until next time, till next Friday, 8 p.m., make sure you catch Noodle Doodle Sunday at 9 a.m. Uh, and we'll do this all over again next week. So, bye-bye. We'll see ya. <laughs> Thanks for everything. We'll see you guys.